Good day everyone. Today we are going to learn about birds and mammals. What are birds and mammals? Birds is one class in phylum Chordata. That's vertebrate. What does vertebrate mean? It means they have backbone and they are warm blooded and lay eggs. Their bodies are covered with feather and they have wings. What are the characteristics of birds? They have feathers, wings, air sacs, they lack teeth, they lay eggs, endothermic, and most have hollow bones, and that's why the birds are so lightweighted, and they help in flying and flight, except for the flightless birds. What are the air sacs? It is a part of birds' respiratory system. It makes the bird's respiratory system very effective. It's more effective, I can say. So then the term endothermic, what does the term endothermic mean? It means they are warm-blooded. The birds are warm-blooded and they produce heat internally. Now let's see the categories of birds. They are classified into 28 categories and most birds are classified into four categories. The first category is birds of prey. They have sharp curved claws and beaks. They hunt on their prey using these curved claws and beaks. For example, eagles, owls, hawks and vultures. The next one is the perching bird. They are the most beautiful bird. They are, they, are, they are the small range of birds and their feet are adapted for climbing and gripping branches. Example, mockingbirds, sparrows, robins. And how about the flightless birds? As the word says, they are flightless. Think about some bird that is flightless. Ostrich. What do they have? They have long legs for running and walking. And how about penguin? They walk too, and they have short legs for walking. And they are all skilled swimmers. These flightless birds are skilled swimmers, which means their legs are also webbed. In a way, they can walk as well as swim. How about the water birds? As the, as the name says, they are adapted for swimming. Their feet are adapted for swimming. They have webbed feet. And so you can see how the duck walks. It's because their feet are webbed. Now, let's see structure of the birds, the types of feather. There are four types of feather. Conta feather, down feather, filler plumes feather, and bristle. Counter feather is the smooth feather that covers the head, body, and wings. Look at the picture. You can see the very tiny feather that covers the, the basic feather that covers the whole body. This feather, they give the shape for the body and they help the bird to fly. Protects them from sun, wind, and rain. How about the down feather? It is just the feather that is under the counter feather. And it holds the body's heat so the bird stays warm. And they are soft and fluffy feather. So next time when you see a bird or when you carry a bird, just look for it. And the next comes the filler plumes feather. They are hair like feathers with a few barbs. You can see those decorative feathers are called the filler plumes feather. Next comes the bristle, the short hair like near bird's nostril to keep out the foreign particles. You can see the bristle in the picture below. Those um, thin hair like that comes up from, which is near the nost nostril. That's called a bristle. Now let's see the basic parts of a feather. The first part is a quill. What is a quill? It's a smooth, hollow part of the shaft that attaches to the skin. So this part is the base that attaches to the skin. And the next comes the, the middle part. 
that thin line in between. It's called Raju. The Raju is a central shaft from which birds ex barbs extend. So what are barbs? The barbs are paired branches that comes off the Raju. And next, next there is um, a vein. What is a vein? They extend from each side of the feather. You can see the whole part on both sides of the feather. Is it, there is a, seri a series of feral branches called barbs make up the vein. So now you would have understood what is barb. The barbs are the paired branches that comes off the rachi. And then there is an after feather. There is fluffy barbs that do not interlock. The barbs interlock forming the barbules. The barbules are found just over the barbs. That is the, the next set of the feathers that is formed from the barbs is called barbules. So these are the basic six parts of the feather. Now let's move to the next thing that is the behaviors of birds. I look at the gift pictures. Each bird has different behavior. Either whether they build their nest or taking care of the young ones. Let's read on it. So birds have complex behaviors when it comes to courtship, building nests, caring for their young and migration. So these birds, they lay eggs with a hard shell. Usually female sits on them to keep them warm. And then what happens? And the bird and the eggs hatches and the bird flies away. Let's see. When the egg hatches, some birds, they hatch with the eyes open and leaves the nest in a short time, but are highly dependent on the parent. But some birds hatch with the eyes closed and do not leave the nest right away. They wait, they grow, they look, they learn, then they leave. And many birds, they travel from one location to another and it is called migration. That is traveling from one location to another is called migration. They use the same route called migration routes. They can travel from any part of the world to a totally different part. So then think about this. How do they recognize their path? How do they navigate? So the birds, they normally they use their Earth's magnetic field for navigation, as well as they find their way by recognizing special, specific landmarks, such as lakes, mountains. And they also follow the sun and other stars or star groups. The speciality of the bird that they could navigate all the way to the roots. So, I think you would have uh, understood the characteristics and behavior and the categories of birds. Now, let's move on to mammals. What are the characteristics of mammals? They have hair or fur that covers their body and females have mammary gland to nurse their youngs. The mammary glands they produce milk so they nurse their young okay and they have specialized bones and ears as you see in this cow the ears they stay stiff when necessary okay and then they give live birth and young cared by the parents. They have diaphragm for expanding their lungs. And they have four chambered heart and they are endotherm. Endotherm means warm blooded. Now let's look into the behavior of mammals. They reproduce and take care of the young ones. As you know, for example, monkeys or dogs or cats or cows, 
any mammal. They do take care of the young ones very well. And mammals travel over large distance as the weather turns cold. That's called migration. Just like birds, they migrate. The thing is, they don't have wings, so they walk around to migrate. So, for example, caribou, they migrate twice a year. So, actually, why do they migrate? They migrate in search of food and... Uh, uh, caribous that are pregnant begin migration in the spring around the same time as the snow melts. So the summer homes provide food for the new calves and other caribou grow strong and healthy. So they migrate twice a year, the same path, the same route. So when it is summer in a park, they stay there, they, they reproduce, and they take care of the calves and move into the other part when the winter turns summer. So they keep migrating like this, depending on the weather. So what are the main groups of the mammals? As we saw the uh, characteristics of mammals, now let's see the main groups, categories of mammals. There are only three categories. Monotrim, marsupial, and placental mammal. The monotrim mammal is an egg-laying mammal. We learn in the characteristics that mammals don't lay eggs. They live like birth, but there are exceptionals that lay eggs, and they are called monotrim. So these eggs, they are, they have a protective shell. It's just similar the way how the reptiles develop. They also develop the same way. The next one is the marsupial. These marsupial mammals, they are blind at birth. You see the picture in the, uh, in the slide. Like you can see the baby kangaroo in the pouch of the mummy. So the young completes development inside the mother's pouch keep the kangaroo as an example in the mind. So the young remains in the pouch until they're able to feed themselves, until that the kangaroo will be staying with their mom, until they feed themselves and they move around. The safe place is the mom's pouch. Oh, and I forgot to give the example for the monotrim. It's the echidna, as you see in the picture. And then comes the marsupial. That is a kangaroo. The third one is a placental mammal. That's the elephant. The placental mammals is one which the young ones develop completely within the mother's body. Once it's fully developed, then the mother gives a life birth. And when they are in the mommy's body, they grow an organ called a placenta that connects the unborn young to the mother. And when the baby is born, the placenta is out. And since they develop a placenta, it's called placental mammal. The mammals that have placenta is called a placental mammal. So we have seen about the birds and the mammals. Let's see the vocabulary words. Metabolism, counter feather, down feather, migration, mammary gland, monotrim, marsupial, and placental mammal. Hope the video helps you guys. Do like and share and subscribe. Thank you.